while I'm doing it, I'm starting the new year with achieving one of my goals, at least starting one of my goals. I decided to work on an oil painting and here I am doing that. This is a canvas size 8 by 10 and we're going to open this and get started. Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Vanessa and I make videos on anything art related, a little bit of this and that. If that speaks to you, consider subscribing. Today I would like to share with you my go-to method for doing oil paints. This is a special painting for the fact that I am making this piece for my mother. Her birthday was in December and she requested a painting of her late cat, Louie. So that is what we're painting today. I sure hope you all are doing well out there and um, are doing things that make you happy. Warning, this is going to be a bit of a long video. So I'm going to give you a general explanation, nothing too in depth, but I am going to explain my process of using oils. So it's going to be that and just a bit of a chat with you guys in this video so please create some art with me today as i take you through my painting process today i would like to share a little bit of what i do to start an oil painting and like everything in art there are more than one ways to accomplish a task and this is just one way to do an oil painting so this method I have been doing for years and I find that it works well for me and I love using it. I would like to share it with you guys. So how I begin is I prime my canvas with a base color and I do this with acrylic. Now I know some artists like to go in straight with oil and I used to do that in college but this is my preferred method. I feel like it saves me time because acrylic dries much faster and I can go ahead, lay down the base, it dries quickly, and then I can go in and draw my composition and when I'm ready, I can go and add my oil paint. I typically like to use a neutral color or a muted color for the base, so I feel that this is a good start for me to get this painting going. I feel like a muted or neutral color helps me to read the colors that I add on top in a better way. I can read the values and vibrancy much better than on, let's say, just white or a bright background. One important thing I want to mention is that when working with oil paint, you can always add acrylic as the base and oil on top but not vice versa. You cannot, I repeat, not put oil as a base and acrylic on top. It will not um, work. At some point the acrylic will lift and the acrylic will start to peel off. So I'm going to show you my reference pictures. My mom requested that I do butterfly over around the eyes of her cat, her late cat Louie, and so I pulled my trusty reference book on butterflies and decided to do this. And so this is what I came up with. I'm sorry I didn't record the underpainting process with you. My camera did not record this process. I thought it was recording and it didn't record, so I apologize. All right, so here we are now. I have blocked in the colors. So this is my underpainting. And so let me explain a little bit about the process. I went in with I went in with these two colors for the background. I have ice green and ash green. I mixed those for that and then I wanted to separate the main values, like the very dark because he's a black cat. And so I, um, I used the burnt umber to represent that. And this is acrylic, by the way. And more of the mid-tones, I used raw sienna. 
and then the highlights I left with the pink background so I know what to do when I start adding the oil. All right, so what else did I use? I used this blue cerulean color for this part of the butterfly wings. And then his eyes, I used light green permanent. And the only thing I need to do is add something to the background. I'm thinking of something circular because I'm into doing that right now and I think it'll add to the piece. So we'll see what happens. So with this process, I have already figured out the colors and the main values. So separating it and this is part of my process of developing the painting, working from simple to more complicated and detailed areas and it seems to work for me and I like to do my underpainting in acrylic because this dries fast acrylic dries fast whereas oil takes a long time to dry so I don't have to worry about this taking a day or hours to dry um, whereas with oil it does take quite a bit of time you can thin it down with paint thinner um, but I, this is my go-to method. This is what I like to do and it works for me. So now it's ready for the oil paint and I've got the circle here and I'm going to add a few other little elements here, I think. So we'll see what I decide to do. So you will see the circle behind the cat and then the other elements I was describing are little leaves that go around the circle. So I ended up liking the way that came out. I think it works well. I didn't want the background to be over complicated, just enough to add a little something and to tie in the cat to the background. I felt like it worked. So for the most part in this video, I recorded little clips of me painting at a time in real time because it seems like most people prefer that and that works. Um, I think there's one part where I did a time lapse and I just felt like it worked for that area. If you are curious about the brands of oil paint that I use, my go-to are Windsor and Newton, Gamblin and Holbein, and also Rembrandt. This is another thing that I like to do when I am getting ready to paint is I like to pre-mix my colors so I pretty much put down the main colors in the composition and then from there I can always take those colors and expand them by adding other colors to adjust them and or going in and adding white to lighten the value and also adding darker colors to darken the value. Now I'm ready to start pulling out my paintbrushes. I'm grabbing those and I'm just going to go for it and start adding some oil. I feel like painting with any process of making art can be so therapeutic and it can be stressful at the same time because sometimes you are trying to achieve a certain effect and it doesn't happen but you have to just let it be enjoy the process and know that it's part of your journey one of the best feelings is when you have something very difficult to do and you've struggled to get to where you want it to be and you actually accomplish it it is so gratifying to see that you met that goal. So I always try to remind myself that as well. And another thing I like to do to keep me going is take breaks. Sometimes if you're at the canvas or in your sketchbook and you're working and reworking areas, just put it away and come back in 20 minutes, sometimes in a day, maybe two days, a few days, whatever it takes, 
until you have your mind cleared where you can go back and rework it. And in full honesty, there have been some projects that I've put away for a few months and then there have been some that I have set away for a year or so and finally I get the courage to go back to it and rework it and finish it and sometimes it goes in a completely different direction than what I first intended but that's okay too so just thought I'd share that. I am an artist that likes to work with different media. I love working with oil paint. I would say that that is one of my favorite painting uh, media to work with. I also like gouache which is my second favorite and I recently have reconnected with watercolor so I'm on a watercolor journey this year trying to improve my skills with that. As far as drawing media, I love using pencil so graphite is fun and pen is fun also and I love colored pencils. And how can I forget my love for my Tombow brush tip markers. Those are fantastic. I'm loving them and then I have recently bought some Zig Kiritake brush pens and those are amazing so I am going to be doing a video on those, reviewing them, and showing you guys a little bit about those pins. I really like painting with oils in thin layers. I guess that's pretty much how I approach any painting media. I'll go in with a thin layer and when it dries or it's dry enough for me to paint on top, I will add more layers on top. At this point in the painting process I am going in and focusing in on major contrast as far as dropping in shadow areas and then I will add the midtones. At this point in the painting process I'm not focusing on minor sort of value changes. Um, I'll get to those towards the end because you know, I just want to block in the major apparent values. I just love blending with oils. They're so easy to blend with. And I like to use a clean brush. After I've put down color, I'll take that clean brush and I'll just buff two colors next to each other together and get a nice blend. Okay, so this is the close of the second day, I'm going to show you the third day. Okay, so it's the next day after my first layer of painting and the colors are drying more monotone, the same value. So I have to go back and get some more contrast on the fur, but before I do that, I want to go in and Put the oil in the background and some oil on the butterfly before I do anything too drastic and that will help me read and understand the colors and values better before I, I do that. So I must confess my least favorite paint to use are acrylic paints. Now please don't come for me if that's your favorite. That's just a per personal preference and I don't like using them because they dry so quickly. I have used the acrylic from Golden called the Open line and I really don't care for those either. So like I said, it's just something that I have fallen out of love with. I used to like them back in the day when I was in high school and maybe in my 20s, but um, now, no, I really don't reach for my acrylics. It's just, I use it as a starting point with my oil paintings and I typically don't do any major works with them. I do it from time to time just so that I can keep my acrylic painting skills up to speed 
because I, I do teach a painting class at um, the school that I teach and so that is one of the mediums that we use to teach the kids so I have to make sure I know what I'm doing and my skills are like I said up to speed with that medium. Another thing about painting media or any media I have moments where I am in a groove and I'm like all about gouache and then that'll be for a month or two and then I'll jump to I'm all about oil painting and so on and so forth. Do you guys do that? Do you sort of migrate from one media to the next or do you just pretty much are loyal to let's say watercolor or whatever it is that you prefer. I am a person that likes to start a project and I am in or I get in the habit of trying to finish it as soon as possible and I really want to work on changing that. I really want to focus on enjoying the process because I am an impatient person and I can't wait to see it done. So I get very fixated on a task and I want to complete it and look at the end results. So um, let me know if you're the same way or you like to pace yourself or are you someone that likes to do things little by little. I do really enjoy drawing and painting animals. I have done quite a few drawings of animals in my sketchbooks and a couple of paintings of my pets. So I thoroughly enjoy it. So when my mom asked me to do this piece here, I was okay with it because one, it's for my mom and two, it's a cat and it was her precious little boy, Louie, so it wasn't a bad idea to do it. Um, what I don't like doing are commission pieces because I have had some bad experiences in the past with people being very controlling on what they wanted and it took out the fun of actually making the piece. So about three years ago, I had put a kibosh on commission pieces. I still have people reaching out from me for, for from time to time to do commission pieces, but I just have to tell them no because honestly, they just stress me out. I would like to be in a position where I can make what I want and sell those pieces or sell prints, but I don't know if I'll ever get there, but that's the dream and that's the plan. My favorite time to work on artwork is going to be later on during the day I find that I'm most creative during that time and um, I come up with some really good ideas during evening and nighttime. And I think the reason for that is for the fact that during that time I pretty much have work done my chores done, all my responsibilities, and my mind are clear because all those necessary things that I need to do for the day are completed and my mind is free just to be creative. So I think that's why I'm most willing to work during that time and able to produce during that time. I do apologize if you hear a bunch of little noises in the background. My house is never completely quiet. I don't have any children, but I have four pets. So I have three cats and a little dog. She is a adorable Pomeranian and so her little feet, you can hear them on the hardwood floor that we have and I have a husband. <laughs> He's in and out of the house. Um, we've had some pretty bad rain over here in California, that's where I live, and so he's kind of running in and out of the house checking on things and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, making sure everything is okay outside because some of my relatives that live maybe about 40 miles away, they've had some flooding in their area, so he's just making sure that 
everything is fine outside. Here I have my oil paints stored in this shelf and I pull out the ones that I want to use for my paintings and put them in a basket like this. So these are all the oil tubes that I use for my painting. And so when I come back the next day, I don't have to dig them out of the, the little shelf. I can just come to this basket and grab the ones that I need to continue painting. That's my method. I want to share with you guys my paint thinner that I use. It's from Gamsol and this is a 100% odorless mineral spirit. It's great for thinning my oils and cleaning my brushes. I've been using it for the past five years. Okay, so we are nearing the end of this video and I would like to share with you and review my oil painting process. So in review, I start my oil paintings by priming my canvas with acrylic paint and I traditionally use a neutral color. This will be part of my underpainting and what I want to do is eliminate the white space so that it's easier for me to read the color in terms of the color's intensity and value. So my next step would be after outlining my image, I'm going to go in with acrylic and start my color blocking process. That's what I usually do. So I am separating the colors and values, filling in the major and main values that I see. So I focus on contrast during this phase of the painting process. So essentially separating the colors and the main values. The next step in my process is to set up my paint palette. So um, I am using a gray palette and it's easier for me to read the colors in terms of intensity and value. So it's a good backdrop um, in terms of tones to see colors more accurately. So I pre-mix my colors with my palette knife and get my major colors that I'm going to be working with on my painting. From there I will adjust the colors and values as needed and this is my paint palette towards the end of my painting. You can see it is quite a mess but that's how I work. Okay so in conclusion I am glad that I have started the new year with doing what I intended to do guys. Work on uh, a painting with oils and I intend to keep up the momentum and keep on producing. So I will say that I thoroughly enjoyed doing this painting and it reminded me of how much I love working with oils. It has left me craving for some more. I definitely will be doing more oil paintings and I will definitely be doing more sketchbooking. And like the name of my channel says, art is therapy. And I hope that you find the same experience with the practice of art making. And if you made it to the end of the video, you are absolutely the best person. And I want to thank you so, so much for joining me today and watching this long video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you found something useful and or entertaining. Um, I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a wonderful and creative day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.